One week is a postdoc and well, I absolutely love it. So postdoc is short for postdoctoral researcher or postdoctoral fellow or postdoctoral scholar. The titles can vary, but the basic idea is the same. That you typically have just um, gotten your PhD and now you're going to a different lab in order to do more research um, and continue your training, but typically in like a different research area to pick up like more skills, more experience, that sort of thing. I am here at UCSF in the lab of Denitza Fujimori and I absolutely, absolutely love it. So postdocs are not like required, like you don't have to do a postdoc, uh, but they're typically often a step that people take after they do their PhD. Sometimes they're doing it to try to gain experience in a different area. Sometimes they're just trying to gain experience while they look for, a, they're just trying to do a shorter one while they like look for a job. Some people do multiple postdocs. Some people do a postdoc in like the same lab or at the same institution. Some people do a postdoc in a similar area. Post, some people do a postdoc in a totally different area. Lots of different options when it comes to postdocs and you don't have to do a postdoc. Um, but it's often, especially if you're wanting to get like a faculty position to actually like have a lab of your own and be a, um, teach people and stuff, you typically do a postdoc. But there's a lot of like industry jobs and that sort of thing, as well as jobs in other areas outside of academia that you can do without getting a postdoc. Um, but yeah, so postdoc is something that a lot of people do, um, but you don't have to. Um, but yeah, so basically you have some more responsibilities, um, but some more freedom and um, really get to kind of put those skills that you learned in grad school to good use. You're not expected to know everything right at once, um, but over time you're expected to build up more skills and become more familiar with things in the lab and then be able to take on more responsibilities than you would as a grad student, maybe have a couple projects going, a little side project. Um, maybe you have a little more freedom, um, but you also have like more responsibilities and often you do more of like mentorship for other people in the lab. So in a lab, there's typically like, sometimes there's undergraduates, there can be high school interns sometimes, um, college interns, um, as well as then there's like the graduate students. There can sometimes, in some labs, there might be master's students and PhD students. Um, and then there's like the postdocs. There can be like uh, lab technicians in some labs or lab assistants, senior scientists, there are different titles for different positions in different labs. But even though you can kind of like make this hierarchy of ranking, really it's everybody helping everybody out, especially like when I'm starting, like I'm learning so much from the like grad students that um, are really helping show me the ropes and talk me through these concepts and these techniques and these ideas. In addition to showing me where everything is, I found the parafilm, got parafilm on my bench, all's good. Um, but so in addition to that sort like just trying to find my way around the lab and around the building, <laughs> I finally figured out which doors, I, which door I could get into, but I'm still trying to figure out the other door I can get into apparently. But anyway, so basically, even after this initial starting period, there's going to be lots of times when I'm going to rely on my coworkers, no matter like what stage of research they're in, um, because they're gonna know a lot more about things than I will in certain areas, but I'm also going to hopefully be able to help teach them um, different things. And hopefully um, in the future, maybe I'll be able to um, like have a graduate student working with me or um, I'm also hoping to do some like external teaching and various things like that um, that um, are potentially in the future because Denise is super duper supportive of my desire to want to get more experience teaching like undergrads. So the new skills that I'm hoping to pick up um, a couple things. So this is like a chemical biology lab more than a biochemistry lab and so biochemistry tends to focus more on like the biology type of side of things in the bio biology, chemistry, mixture, um, and chemical biology, um, it involves more of the chemistry. And so I'm going to get to learn uh, more of the chemistry type things. Today I got registered, I have ChemDraw, which is really, really awesome, which is this tool that you can use um, 
to like draw chemical structures. I also have like the science finder. There's some really cool stuff that I'm, software that I am getting to use. Um, and I'm going to get to learn a lot of new techniques, um, as well as enter a whole new research area. So I'm going to start um, working on ribosomes, which are the protein making machinery inside of your cells. Um, they follow the instructions in the messenger RNA to make a protein. And so more about those in other posts, and I won't bore you now to, with that today. But Needless to say, although I know like the basics about ribosomes before coming here, and especially because I read up because I knew what I was going to be working on, there's still a lot, a lot, a lot to learn and it can be kind of overwhelming. And so a few days ago, I did a post about like how I was kind of structuring things, starting out when there's, you're entering this new field and there's so much, so much, so much to learn. I'm trying to focus on narrowing down those key labs, writing, just basically keeping notes like digital notes I have like a one note file and putting down like all these words that if I need to search for them I can find them the link for the papers every time I come across a paper I think might be helpful there's no re way I'm gonna read them all like right now it's just not possible because you keep going from one paper to another paper to another paper and you keep going down this rabbit hole but no but as long as you have saved the references and I put like a little note like this paper has a good blah, 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 or blah, 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 whatever. And then have the references, then I can go back to that when I have a little more time. So it can be like super overwhelming at first and I keep having to remind myself over and over, you're not expected to know all this at once. You're not expected to know all this at once because although it's really exciting to get to learn all these new things, it can be kind of terrifying knowing that there's all of these things that you don't know. And um, so in addition to like key papers, key labs, key techniques, um, various things like that as well as keep making like a cheat sheet of some of the acronyms and terminology because there's a lot of uh that sort of thing uh especially in this ribosome field there's like so many acronyms so i have a lit cheat sheet going of like these things so that i can remember that an rpf is a ribosome protected fragment um and the lsu is the large subunit rsu or SSU is a small subunit and then all the different names of the things inside. But basically the thing is that although I am a postdoc now, I, in a lot of ways it's like starting over, except I'm not starting over from scratch because I have all those skills um, that I gained during my, um, during my graduate, during graduate school. And so I have a lot of the skills that are helping me know how to ask good questions, answer questions, find the answers to questions in the literature, design techniques, design, I mean, design experiments, that sort of thing. And so even if I don't know the exact techniques that I'm going to use, and even though I'm having to learn all these new facts about ribosomes and about chemicals and all of this stuff, there's the, the, like the steepness of the learning curve is a lot, lot better than it was in grad school when you're still like learning all of this at once. And so basically I'm having a really, really awesome time. Um, I'm really, really loving things so far and I'm really, really excited about um, the research that I'm gonna be doing so I can't tell you the details. Um, but hopefully in the future, I'll be able to tell you more. Um, and right now I'm just really, really excited and I'm reading all these papers and there's like, I wanna test this and this and this and this and this and this and this. So I have so many ex ideas um, and so much excitement and I'm really excited to actually start doing stuff, but at this point I'm still like in the reading and figuring out what I need to order um, and various things like that to try to get um, all of these experiments, hopefully in the future that I really want um, to do, but I'm super duper excited about that. And yeah, so I think that like the only bad thing about starting really was like, I think day two is the worst because day one, you're just so excited to be there. And then day two, you have like all of this onboarding, you have like, hours and hours worth of like training videos that you have to go through and then I thought it was done and then they sent me a bunch more but I'm hopefully through with all of that and so from now on I can focus on really getting these um myself more familiar with the field with the literature where things with where things are in the lab and then um dive in um actually start doing stuff at the bench and so I've got my bench um starting to get my bench set up got my desk um so all's really all's really really exciting um and i'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be here in this lab and to be so welcomed um and 
it's really great to be back in California and um, near my family and everything. And so I'm just really, really grateful. So I hope this helped um, give people some insight into postdoc life as far as I know it so far. Um, starting a postdoc, uh, what a postdoc is. I'm looking forward to um, what the future is going to bring here. And right now I'm just feeling really, really grateful. Um, so huge thanks to everyone in the Fujimori lab for um, taking me in and making me feel so welcome. And I look forward to working with you all. And yeah. And to any postdocs and grad students out there um, in biochemistry or molecular biology, I encourage you to check out the IUBMB's um, training initiative. Um, so we got started a few months ago and it's going really great. And we want to help provide resources and connect uh, people around the world who are in training to be scientists. And this could include you. Um, so check out the website.